everybody. But in order to take action, in my recollection, the last time we had such a meeting uh, was maybe 2004, 2005, no, it was in that late. Like where in Florida? 2003. It was in 2003 where there was a special meeting of council called by council members. Uh, it was actually a pension issue at that time. It was um, to consider revoking a uh, pension spike for an outgoing police officer. Oh, and the, uh, it, that's the last time you were calling. Right, the yeah, outgoing chief of police. That's the last time I recall mm -hmm. uh, and where an actual quorum right. attended and, 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 and tried to take action. But in terms of, of your consideration of putting something on the agenda, what would go in your decision making process, process of whether to in fact do this? I will see the gauge the interest of council and make sure that it's not in any way uh, violative of my commitment to the firefighters. How do you feel about um, the special meeting, the fact that it was called? I mean, is it, does it offend you in any way? I told you, I participated in a special call meeting to council when I was a council member. It is a charter right granted to council members. I actually think council members would be foolish to trade that for six council members to put an item on the agenda. And I don't think, legally, I think it's very difficult to, to make that work because if they're not allowed to have a executive session or a secret meeting in order to place the craft the agenda item, it would have to be really broad and that would be a very difficult process. But three council members, all they have to do is post a meeting and have their colleagues show up and they can take action on the item that has been posted. Thank you. Thank you. Very positive. Uh, you know, we get into a, uh, my council liaison who does a fabulous job jokes around with council members and they get kind of competitive with each other and I have no question that he may have may have said something like, hey, I want to make sure you don't have a quorum. I have no problem with quorum. Council members are welcome to do this. I did it as a council member. It is their right. Hmm. Is there a lot of concern by council members about a lack of transparency in this whole thing? Council members have said the very same thing, uh, you know, it's like every other every other month one of these one of these comes up. We have to understand this is a strong mayor system. I have the authority to negotiate contracts. Council members aren't allowed in the room unless I invite them in. And there's no practical way to negotiate with 16 council members sitting on my side of the, the table as we're, we're negotiating contracts. Unlike most cities, they are not a pure legislative body they really do function under our charter more as a, a board of directors. Yesterday morning would have been the first time I could have publicly posted a meeting to outline to council members what was in the agreement. This seemed uh, easier to do it today than, than yesterday. And uh, again, council members now have all the information that I have to give them. It's up to them to decide if they want to take further action. There is no other action they can take, however, beyond a motion to support me or a motion to, I guess, censor me or something, and say they don't like what I did. Um, the, the, the topic of, uh, well, they contract, meet and confer, and so on, has been ongoing for, for decades, actually. Um, it seems curious to me, as a relative outsider, that, and I think for many people, that Mr. Murphy's bill seems to be the first proposition to change that that I'm aware of and why is after five five years no one else has done that this is uh, Murphy's bill is not a big confer bill mm -hmm. and uh, Representative Murphy actually filed a bill in the last session and it was a blanket bill that took out things that I believe are wrong in, in any pension including uh, spiking uh, he, so it would have been, it would have applied to any pension mm -hmm. in the state and, and prohibited certain practices. It didn't, it didn't pass. Mm -hmm. My understanding is what he has filed is a local control bill that goes much beyond uh, meet and confer. It actually says that it, it gives the authority to 
local councils to take a vote and assume local control of your family. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they've been up here for Hill Battle. But I have complimented Representative Murphy in the past. He is the only member of our local delegation who has consistently said he cared about pension reform and worked to try to get something done. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't it curious that none of the other members have joined in? I, I was just curious. Yeah. All right, thank you. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just very pleased, and I, and I mm -hmm. tried to convey at the beginning of, this, of today's presentation, and, and I'll, I'll do it again. This isn't pension reform. It's not saving. It is, but it, but it, it is a huge step forward in the relationship between the city of Houston and our firefighters' pension fund. Rather than my preference, and I put it in writing to them, I went to the pension board and, and gave a verbal request as well, was that simply by adjusting the annual cost of living increase for retirees, firefighters wouldn't have to put any, any more money in. That is the simplest, cleanest uh, reform, and it would represent pension reform. And what happened is that, I mean, they just refused to, to consider that, and so I, you know, I'm, I'm an incrementalist. I put the best deal on the, on the table, and we're going to go on down the road. So Mayor, talk about the legislature. Um, two, two things. Are you concerned that local opposition among the, the council, whether they take a vote or not, will um, impact the passage of the legislation there? And are you concerned, uh, Councilman Costello mentioned, you know, if this goes through, I don't know how we would give anybody the impression that we have fixed it. This is a this is a three year deal. It it's an unprecedented deal and it represents a, a new era in the relationship between the city of Houston and the pension. It allows the new mayor to get his feet wet wet and then to go to the next legislative session and uh, begin to craft something out if, if he or she wants to do that. Uh, Considering the, the lack of traction in previous years on, on the pension reform, I don't, I, I don't see this, this as taking anything off the table. It, it doesn't bind the future administration. I, I can't bind the future administration. And so, uh, what you heard primarily, what the majority of council was silent. The next most common response was, well, we should have been consulted earlier in the process. And I understand that, and it is just the way it is. And then finally, you had some mayoral candidates and or uh, budget hawks who have clear positions on this, uh, pounding home their, their positions. And so it was, uh, I think, an entirely predictable meeting. To the general public whose eyes glaze over at this entire contest, how do you succinctly explain to them what's happening? Pension costs are crowding out the needs of day-to-day -day services in the city. Pension costs are going up more rapidly than any other cost we have. We have very limited tools to bring in those pension costs. This is a baby step forward in trying to get to a point where everybody acknowledges their problem. So the people that say that it's just the kick in the can down the road, they're going to say what they're going to say. I, I said from the beginning it's not pension reform. But I would take exception to the idea that it's kicking the can down the road. It is absolutely progress, and I laid out five reasons why I think it's progress. The most important reason being that the pension fund came to me with a proposal which means they acknowledge that there's a problem, and they have never acknowledged that there's a problem. Uh, one Air Force position question. Uh, do you, uh, what, what's all the money that's at stake? Do you view the allegations and the discussions and the concerns as inevitable or? or I view it as inevitable. I have been here for, in the, in the council office, in the controller's office, and now as, as mayor for Air Force concession. I've never seen one that wasn't interested. These are long contracts, they're big money contracts, they're highly competitive, and so far this has been the smoothest one I've ever seen.